So, so thank you, Lindsay, for joining us all the way from Australia. Yes, yeah, so the other side, because what time is it uh, where you're at? It is 10 p.m. in the evening. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock. I'm, here. Be here. I'm, I'm just really chuffed that uh, you even thought of me, Tiffany. So thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, I was, we're, we're looking at, we want to create additional content and opportunity for our Locals National Speakers Association uh, participants for the Academy. And I was like, who better in my mind to interview than you? Because you're actually the one that got me. Uh, involved in NSA and encouraged me to take the the be a part of the Speakers Academy and I'll swing back around to that in a little bit. Uh, all right, so let me introduce you guys to my good friend Lindsay Adams. He's known around the world as the relationship guy. I actually met him over a decade ago at a referral institute conference and we hit it off immediately. We were having some fun uh, and he was like, "You definitely should be a part of the Speakers Academy." and I knew nothing about the Speakers Academy other than Lindsay said to do it, signed up, got started. I did. Uh, Lindsay is a very experienced speaker. He's based in Brisbane, Australia. He's a CSP, a global speaking fellow, and a Hall of Fame speaker, not only in Australia, but also in the Philippines. He's been the national president of Australia, as well as the Global Speakers Federation uh, and more importantly, was recently awarded an Order of Australia medal for his services to the speaking industry in the National Australia Days Awards. And he was just sharing he's supposed to get that award on May 6th. <laughs> they're, they're not quite on lockdown yet. It, uh, their kids are even still in school. I was like, oh, wow, because our kids have been out for about two weeks. Not our kids. The kids have been out for about two weeks now. Um, so, And they're not going back till at least April 15th. Though I've heard some say May 15th. So... Um, their their right. kids are still at school, um, and and this honor that he's get, been given is one of the highest honors. What did you say? It's the fourth highest honor in yeah. Australia. It's it's huge, uh, thoroughly uh, unexpected, and um, uh, just overwhelming and delightful at the same time. Cool, um, and. So putting that all that aside, he's a great guy, and I'm so excited to have him here with us today. I always thought he'd be brilliant to bring to our chapter meeting, but Australia to Tampa is kind of a, a long haul, uh, but we're here virtually. And so, Lindsay, hi. Hi. Welcome. It's, um, thank you, and uh, I'm delighted to be here. So what are we, uh, what are we talking about? So I was wondering, uh, to kick us off, if you'd be willing to share with the Academy members why are the Academy participants, why it is that you recommended so highly being part of NSA and the Speakers Academy? So it was really simple. I'd been a member of Professional Speakers Australia, which used to be known as National Speakers Association of Australia, but we need to change our name. <clears throat> I've been a member now for 22 years. I am the registered old guy in our chapter. Uh, and... Uh, I have got so much from being a member of the association. And so when I met you, Tiffany, you were, you know, an aspiring speaker, a great trainer, great presenter, and I just saw so much potential. And, and I said, you know, I think the conversation went something like, have you heard of NSA? They have this great thing called Academy, you should join. And um, <clears throat> being young and gullible, you followed my advice. Uh, no, 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 being a smart cookie, you followed my advice and you know academy and for you know the people who are already in academy they can obviously they can see the value but i love the concept and uh and in fact i am uh running my own little academy alongside of our chapter here in brisbane not brisbane brisbane australia um it's the accent i know uh and so you know, you guys, it's it's like 10 meetings over a year. You get to hang out with people who want to do what you're doing and you get to hang out with people who are already doing it. And that's the, you know, that's the juice. That's the really best bit where you get to um, learn from the experienced speakers, the CSPs or, or others who might present. And, um, you know, I think the, the, the jump that it gives you in terms of the jump start into really running a good business um, is is really worth the leg up. Um, so, you know, one year of academy, one year of hanging about, you'll be a professional member in no time, and, and then onwards and upwards, CSP, here we come. Um, and, and that's the plan, by the way. Um, that's your goal, CSP. 
Uh, it only takes five years and it's well worth the slog, okay? Cool. And now things are a little different with what's going on right now. What would be your advice to people uh, dealing with this whole virus and what's going on and the dramatic change in the speaking industry? So uh, we just had our annual convention two weekends ago in Adelaide, uh, right in the, the middle of the south of Australia. And uh, it's probably the last convention that any of us will be attending for a very long time. And uh, it was almost a competition as to who had the most cancellations uh, across that weekend. It was, you know, at one part it was quite scary, but at another part it was nice to be surrounded by our, our speaker family so that we could love and support each other. And we certainly did that. And, you know, we, we talked about it in a session on, on the main platform and uh, we came to the conclusion that we are all leaders in the community and it's our job to lead from the front, to be positive, to share our message and, and to continue our role as influencers in the community. Now, we can't do that in the traditional way that we're all used to, and that is on the platform, but we still have so many ways that we can do that. We can still uh, write our blogs. We can still publish our newsletters. We can still do online programs like you and I are doing right now. And in fact, uh, you know, before we came on for this session, you and I, Tiffany, you know, you said, hey, how's your day been? I went, well, I've been scrambling because I've been pivoting um, because I am now really focusing in on the online stuff. I've, I have some online programs, but I have a number of very loyal clients and I've now gone to them and said, hey, we can still work together. Um, we can just do it in a different way. And they're kind of going, really? How, how could we possibly? And so we have to be the leaders. And so I think for, for anyone who's watching or listening, um, think about how can you do this in a slightly different way? Okay, that's your challenge. Yeah, and I mean, you're a relationship guy. When I think of relationships, I, I think of getting together face to face and, and working on that. So any yeah. tips for working and maintaining those relationships in a time period where you're not supposed to talk to like be within our thing here is social distancing. So six feet is minimum oh, for gosh. how far Same you're supposed to be. All around the world. So, so here's the thing, uh, you know, about relationships. And, um, you know, if you're at all bored, go onto Amazon and get a copy of this book here. It's called The DNA of Business Relationships, written by a bloke called Lindsay Adams. I know him well. He's a nice guy. Uh, in, in the book, I talk about how to get into relationship quickly. And one of the things that I have done in the last 14 days is really work those relationships that I have. Now, uh, when I became the national president here in Australia, it was 2006, 2007, a long time ago, um, I really built a network of connections right around the country. And then I went on and I served internationally and I became the international president, the president of what's now known as the Global Speakers Federation. And so then I built a, a network internationally. And so an, a national network, an international network, and I work hard at maintaining those, those networks. Um, and so I've been in touch with not only clients, but speaking buddies from right around the world a lot in the last 14 days. Uh, and, you know, um, I was talking to a, a good friend, good mate of mine in Toronto, Canada, uh, just yesterday, and he was really down in the dumps. And he said, my business is shot. Um, I've got nowhere to go. I won't have a business in 12 months time. Conferences, as we know them, they won't exist. And I said, hey, whoa, slow down, fella. Think about this for a second. Do you remember a little event called 9-11? Now, you know, it's all burned into our brain that day. Now, it, you would all recall, I'm sure, that after that, um, they said conferences are dead. There'll be no more face-to-face -face conferences. It'll all be done virtually. Um, it, it, nobody will get on an aeroplane again. Well, guess what? They did. Um, and then just recently in London, they had the terror bombings in the underground and they said in London there'd be no more large gatherings of people. Well, surprise, surprise, there are. Human beings will always want to congregate with other human beings. And in fact, we had a gathering recently in Namibia, uh, a global speakers gathering, uh, 98 speakers from 20 countries around the world. And I actually led a panel on the future of speaking. And we talked about this very issue. And, and I believe that speaking as we know it will always exist. And yes, 
technology will change and yes there will be um, you know holograms uh, you know uh, and and discussions just like we're doing right now uh, they will happen yes they will and human beings will always want to hang out with other human beings so we will always gather we will always press the flesh we want to shake hands we want to hug and we want to hang out with each other so I honestly believe that uh, you know the industry will be there it'll just be different I, I agree it's gonna be what's our new normal and it's exciting to see what will change for us now a lot of us have some not all of us but some of us have some free time over the next couple of weeks <laughs> or months or however long it's going to be and you know it's interesting I was having a conversation yesterday with Tom Fleming and we were talking about, you know, for the past several years, most of us have been doing a lot of harvesting in our relationships, gaining, reaping the rewards of all the hard work we've done. And yeah. we are not going to be harvesting really, especially as speakers a lot at this point in time. And it's a really great time for us to be working on our business. And as speakers, one of the most powerful tools we have in our arsenal uh, happen to be stories. And I know that you're an amazing storyteller. So I was wondering if you can give us some advice whether we're brand new speakers just getting started or long-term speakers that maybe just want to up it a little bit, some advice on how do we work on our stories uh, this, at this point in time? Okay, um, really simple. Uh, you know, one of the things that oh, I have- Oh, and sorry, before we get started, uh, for those of you that are watching, we're so glad to have you. Um, we do have the opportunity to do some uh, Q&A so definitely put your questions in the chat box. Um, as we go through this, we'll, you know, if it's relevant to what he's talking about now, he'll kind of pause in between um, before he transitions and then we can ask some questions. And uh, we'll definitely get questions at the end because I do have a, a speaking engagement question, but we'll save that to the end. So y'all put your questions in the chat box and we'll uh, get those taken care of too. Yeah, All right, I Lindsay, my apologies. Uh, no, no problem at all. I can give you the address of the men's shop where I bought this amazing shirt, <laughs> if you're at all interested. Uh, I am a bit of a shirt guy, um, a bit of a reputation for wearing interesting shirts. Now, let's get back to this storytelling thing. You know, um, I one of the things that really captured my imagination, I went to my first ever convention in the year 2000 in our nation's capital, Canberra. And one of the things that really captured my attention was the storytelling. And, <clears throat> and from, uh, from that event, I have constantly kept a, a little log of interesting stories or events that have happened to me in my life. And I only use my own stories. I never tell anyone else's stories. Um, why, why is that? Well, um, so here, this has happened um, to many, many speakers and, and myself included. Um, you hear a great joke or you hear a great story, you go up on stage and you're going to use that great joke or story and the speaker before you uses that joke or story. And or you don't hear the speaker before you, you tell the same joke or story and the audience goes, ha, ha, ha. Uh, boring. We heard that one 40 minutes ago. So you've got to use your own stuff. And the more unique it is the better and that is your own stories are the best stories because they're yours no one else has done them and it's your experience and then you've got to create your spin on your story so um, I want to show you this index finger and you can see it's a it's a you know it's a little weird shape it's got got a big um, it doesn't it's it's not good um, I put a circular saw through that finger while I was building a chicken coop, or as we call them in Australia, a chook house in the backyard. Uh, that finger cost me a lot of months off work. It cost me a fortune in doctor's fees and physiotherapy and, and so on. Uh, however, that finger is now the opening story for one of my keynote speeches. So I figured I spent so much money on doctors, I've got to get a return on my investment somehow. Now, I can turn that finger story um, and, you know, basically I tell the story of I cut my finger, I ran up to the house, bleeding into the kitchen sink, went to the hospital, and what happened next? Now, from there, I can lead off into a leadership theme, 
I can go off into uh, a teamwork theme or I can go off into a referrals presentation. And so the story is the catalyst for me to take the audience on a journey um, into a business message. But people will remember the story years after they forget your name. And I can tell you this time and time again, I've gone to a conference organiser and I've said, so tell me, who did you have last year? And they go, oh, uh, we had this amazing blonde woman from Tampa. She, she's got this amazing sock collection. I go, oh, great. What was her name? Oh, yeah, man, she was so funny. She had this great story. Blah, 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 blah. Tells me the story. What was her name? Oh. And people will remember your stories long after they've forgotten who the hell you are, Tiffany Kellogg. Um, and so... So have a story that's memorable, have a story that's real, have a story that's yours and nobody else's, okay? okay. So simple stuff to start. What if, how do I find that story? <laughs> Buy a circular saw. <laughs> so um, you, you just got to keep your, you, you keep your antennae up at all times for interesting stories and think about how could I use that? Or if something funny happens, just write it down. And then as you're going through and constructing a speech, think about, well, what have I done in my life that's relevant to this group that, that they could relate to uh, that, you know, my story would be relevant in a business context. So um, the house I live in, I built myself. Uh, me and my 70 year old apprentice, my dad, uh, we actually built the house. So I stood the, the timber frame, I put up the roof trusses, I labored for the bricklayer, I put in all the windows, I laid 70 square meters of tiles on the floor. Um, you know, I painted all the walls, the ceilings, everything, you name it, I've done it in this house. Now, um, so 20 something years later, I start thinking about, you know, that story, in fact, it, that story is the basis for this book. Did I mention this book? Um, the DNA of business relations, how to expand relationships. In the book, you can learn all about the story of how I built the house by relationship. And it was, it was 20 years later when I was thinking about, you know, um, I'm teaching people how to do business by relationship. And Tiffany, that's how you and I met with, uh, you know, working at Referral Institute. And I, I started to think about what's a relevant story. And then I realized that I built this house by relationship. And so I talk about how I got into relationship and some of the amazing things that happened. I, I jumped on a plane. I was flying to our nation's capital again, Canberra. I worked in the tax office in those days. Um, oh, by the way, how to stop a conversation quickly at a barbecue. Lindsay, what do you do for a living? I'm an auditor in the tax office. Oh, I think my phone's ringing. Anyway, so I get on the plane. I sit beside this guy, uh, I say, you know, me being me, hi, my name's Lindsay, what do you do? And the guy say, introduced himself and he says, I'm the state sales manager for Austral Bricks. And I go, Bricks? So we start talking about house building and bricks and so on. The plane lands, he reaches up into the, the locker, takes out his briefcase, gets out his business card and hands it to me. And he said, when you're ready, call me. And I, you know, like this naive look comes across my face. And I said, call you? And he says, yeah, Bricks, I'll look after you, call me. So we called the guy, I went there with my wife, we'd chosen what we could afford. And I said to him, we'd like that brick there. And he went, no, 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 you want that brick there, which was the most expensive in the, the whole range. And I said, the problem is we can't afford that brick. And he said, I said, I'd look after you. Tiffany, we got those bricks so cheap. And, and that, it was incredible. Now, I, I really started to analyse what, what part of that conversation motivated that guy to want to do that for me. And that's what I wrote about in the book. And so I, I kind of unpacked the journey of building the house. And that's just one story of many that happened while we were building the house. And so now I have a whole presentation around the house. I've got a book based on the house story. And so... Um, and think that's another thing, you know, you start with a story, you create a speech, then you create a book, 
then you create a, a, a training program and then you create an online program and then you create a coaching program and then you create a, a you know, and, and the list goes on. Can you see how that works? I mean, the story is the essence of everything that a good professional speaker does. Definitely. And it, it, it does stick. And you're so right. Cause I have people sometimes they're like, Oh yeah. This, like they won't remember my name or the blonde or the Southern, but Oh, she's the one with socks. Yes. You're the one with the finger. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I think that the power of us using our own stories, not only is it, we don't have the problem of people, you know, using the same stories we do. It also, because it's about us, we, we live it. Yeah. And it doesn't have to yeah. be something that happens, you know, it's awesome that you went back 20 years to be like, okay, here's what I did and let me pull it in. I have a and story I like to use about cornhole and target market, like how you want to be focused and aim for what's really good. And now it's, we played cornhole last weekend. And so I'm like, okay, I've got to put this on social media and share it. Cause I talk about, you know, having that great target market Excellent. and the fact yeah. my husband was killing me at the game. <laughs> well, um, for anybody who's watching, uh, if we ever have another NSA convention, I'm a regular attendee and I, I do have, um, my, my, uh, ticket booked for uh, Maryland or Washington, they're calling it, um, going to be a great hotel. I went and had a look at it in January uh, when you see me, just give me the finger salute. Uh, all of my mates, um, they, they all do, they, they're quite, they give me the crooked finger salute. So uh, I will know that you are on this call if you approach <laughs> me in the hallway and do this, okay? <laughs> so, hey, Lindsay, and, and give the salute, okay? Uh, in fact, it's become part of my branding. Uh, on my business card, I'm, I'm kind of holding up the finger. Now, if you've never met me before, you just think I'm like number one or, you know, the whatever. But if you've seen me speak, when I hand out the card, people go, oh, my goodness, the finger. And it's so memorable and it's linked to the story. So, you know, what's your story? And, and for me, that's become a real signature piece, you know, the signature story. Uh, and, and, of course, it just fits so well, you know, with relationships, the relationship guy, the whole, the whole brand, you know. Yeah. Cool. Um, any other tips that you have for us on storytelling before I've got a couple questions for you on non-storytelling stuff? I think um, the, the real key is that you have to be able to link your stories to a business message. Because if you just tell a story, well, that's lovely, but what's the point? So the people have to understand what's the learning that comes from the story. And so, you know, there'll be some times when I'll say, so why am I telling you this? I want you to understand blah, blah, blah. So I'll really spell it out because uh, some audiences, I know, let me put it a different way. Some speakers don't emphasize their point strongly enough and the audience walks away and goes, yeah, interesting. A lot of stories, but I don't know what, what it was all about. So you've got to make that connection. Okay. Cool. Excellent. All right. So a couple questions that I have for you. Um, again, for those of you here on this, either put them in the chat or in the Q&A. So Teresa wants to know, what type of speaking engagements did you get when you first started out compared to what type you get now? I got low fee paid engagements compared to high fee paid. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds so arrogant. Now, when I started out, I did a lot of training, uh, and that's my background. I had um, 23 years in the public sector. I worked in the three tiers of government here in Australia, Commonwealth, state, local, uh, and I used to be an auditor in the tax office, and seriously, I found out I was in the wrong job. I went on a manager development program. Uh, the facilitator called me out at the end of the day and said, what are you doing here? Uh, you're not like these people. That question led to a three-hour conversation and he helped me understand I was in the wrong job. Uh, he, he held up a mirror and helped me understand that I was not an auditor. I'm a people person and uh, did me the biggest uh, favour in my career. So I um, did a little, uh, you know, it was a catalyst moment in my life, as I call it. And I, I moved sideways out of audit into training and then... Um, I joined this organization called NSAA in Australia, as it was then known, now PSA, and um, saw keynote speakers and platform professionals and, oh, my goodness, that's where I wanted to go. So I've made the transition from 
you know, two-day trainer to keynote her. And there's a big difference between the two and, and never think they're the same. They are not the same. Um, and so I love to this day training people and taking them on the journey from where they are now to where they need to be. And I love delivering a keynote speech. Cool. Great, great answer. Great question. Thank you so much. Um, Carolyn wants to know, do you use LinkedIn a lot in your business to build relationships? And if so, what's your strategy? And also what other social media is used in Australia? Okay. Um, we have all the social media that you have, believe it or not. How about that? Um, and do I use LinkedIn? Absolutely. Uh, and I would love to connect with you. Um, for those of you who are watching, um, you know, go find me, Lindsay Adams, uh, OAM. Look for those letters. You'll, you can't miss it. Um, I would love to connect with you. And in fact, here's an even greater challenge for you. If you've enjoyed this presentation, why not just go on to my LinkedIn profile and say a few nice words about, you know, saw Lindsay uh, do a short presentation, loved his work. He's an amazing speaker. You should pay him a lot more money next time, whoever you are reading this now. Um, in, in fact, uh, true story, I used to uh, run, uh, I used to present at a venue management school. So in Australia, we have the Venue Management Association. In America, it's called the International Association of Venue Managers. I've presented for both organisations. Um, so I presented at this school. You don't get paid for it. It's a voluntary job, but I got a lot of business from it. And I, I used to tell my, the, the people in my, uh, in my room every year, now fill in the feedback form, write down, um, get Lindsay back next year, pay him double. Um, said it as a joke one year. The administrator rang me up uh, a month later and said, Lindsay, I'm going through all the feedback forms. Like, what, what's this get Lindsay back next year, pay him double all about? They actually wrote it down. I never thought they would. Uh, but um, I, I love LinkedIn. I have got a lot of business from LinkedIn. I have some very um, deliberate LinkedIn strategies that I use and I'm very structured in my approach with LinkedIn. Uh, I have developed a system where I can send out a hundred invitations and get 33 people to attend um, uh, like an introductory program that I run, which then leads into a, a much bigger program. So I've kind of really worked out at LinkedIn. I have 13,500 connections or something at the minute, somewhere near there. Um, and I really, I don't necessarily work hard at connections anymore because they just sort of come naturally now. It's, a, it's become a beast of its own, but I really do work those connections and I'm very careful with my messaging and, and I am very deliberate about who I message and what I say to them because um, a lot of people, when you connect with them on LinkedIn, you get an automatic response that says, hey, hey, Lindsay, great to connect. Would you like to buy my stuff? Because I've got really good stuff and you can buy it right now and we've got a special just for you. And if you think about the relationship stuff, I have no relationship at all with that person and they're trying to sell me stuff. And if you think about Tiffany, um, you know, the, the great Ivan Meisner used to talk about visibility, credibility, profitability. Um, they're only just visible to me. They've got no credibility and they're trying to jump to profitability. It doesn't work. Um, and so um, LinkedIn for me is a great business generator and I encourage all of you to sharpen your LinkedIn tool uh, skills. It's a great tool. Um, I'm on the professional version. I'm not on the sales navigator. It's a little bit cheaper and it does everything that I need it to do. Okay. Um, in terms of social media, I'm on Facebook. Um, look, I do have an account with Twitter, but I'm, I don't really play that much. Um, I'm on Instagram, but again, I don't play that much. So really for me, it's LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, but you know, uh, I have other speaker mates who do a lot of stuff on Instagram. They post a lot of video, um, video, video, video is the way to go these days. Uh, uh, and I have a lot of, um, you know, really good friends who get a lot of business out of Twitter as well. It doesn't like, you know, it doesn't float my boat. So, um, you know, yeah, there you go. That's it for me. Now, why are you saying, cause I know you just mentioned like it's video, video, video. Why do you feel video is so important? Because I know a lot of times there's a lot of people, uh, even some speakers that are uncomfortable doing video. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 
YouTube is the second biggest search engine after Google. So um, if people are searching for information and your video pops up, you, 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 you're halfway there. And people want to, they want information, they want entertainment, and they're happy to watch a video m much more than just to read a dry document. Um, and so you're looking at my video studio. I'm actually sitting at my desk, believe it or not. But um, if you look over my shoulder, I've got my um, a nice plant, my book, um, a nice certificate of uh, you know service from uh, PSA. I've got an, another certificate there from one of my suppliers, uh, you know, with a lifetime achievement award. There's a window there which is covered with a blind. At night it works okay. Day it's a bit hard with the light sometimes, but it's kind of my frame if I can put it that way. And so I do a lot of video, and this is the frame that you see. Okay, so Tiffany, I look behind you, I see some books, I see a picture, um, you know, a blue wall. It, you know, for all I know, it could be um, a green screen with a fake background. No, nope, this is actually, when I created, when I redid my office a couple of years ago, um, I actually said, I don't actually usually typically sit at a regular desk. Um, I'm more of a on the go kind of gal and where in my house do I feel like working today, but I kept my desk and it only has my video equipment on it. And I set up this background as, you know, I've got my books. They're kind of up there. I should probably move those. But I've got, yeah. you know, some books. I used to have real plants, but I went fake because they died. I'm not good at that. And I, I just wanted a background that looked professional, though wasn't like um, super yeah. overboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, of course, these days, Zoom, uh, you, can, you can put up all sorts of backgrounds. I, yeah. I had a conversation with a woman in in the US recently and I thought, man, she's got, that's a really expensive house. And then I thought, wait a minute, that, the proportions aren't right. That furniture, there's, and it was just a fake background. Um, and so if your computer has enough grunt, then you can put up any background you like if you've got a green screen. Uh, but be careful with the green screen that you don't move around too much because you get this blurry, you know, uh, business which, we we will not get doing what we're doing at this minute. Um, so, you know, entirely up to people's personal preference, of course. Um, I was talking with another uh, friend in the Netherlands, a speaker, and she said, um, I'm talking to you from my kitchen table. Um, my kitchen's really untidy, but uh, it looked like she was in an office, uh, in like a meeting room, and it had her logo over her shoulder. She'd had it, the... the the background purpose built to insert into zoom. So there you go. Cool. Uh, Carolyn had a question advice to brand new speakers who have a personal tragedy. They are making into a message for others to overcome objections. Advice was that advice. So yeah, advice to brand new speakers who have a personal tragedy. They are making into a message for others to overcome. Oh, sorry. I said objectives overcome obstacles. Thanks, Carolyn. Overcome, overcome obstacles. obstacles. Okay. So, um, the thing is to make, um, when you're working with a real story, it's okay to stretch the truth a little. Now, Let's not be liars here, but it's okay to embellish, to um, make a point. Um, there's a uh, one of your past presidents, Patricia Ball, I think she's now retired. Pat spoke at one of our conferences years ago and talked about being locked out of her hotel room in her slip. She had didn't have a dress on, she just, she was in her underwear basically. But she was decent, but indecent, if I can put it that way. Now, she told the story. It was, we were just gagging with laughter. It was so funny. And she told how she, you know, snuck down to reception and got the key and, you know, got back in and la, la, la. You can imagine. Anyway, so then she deconstructed the story and told us what really happened. Um, she actually exaggerated some of the points. And at the time, I was a... I was a very new speaker and I thought, what, what? But then I've learned over time that it's okay. If you want to make a good point, it's okay to stretch the truth to, to make it funnier. Maybe, 
maybe just to tug at the heartstrings a little more. But be careful. Um, we're not in this to tell lies, okay? So you can't say, I climb Mount Everest with one arm tied behind my back blindfolded because you know what? You will be found out. That's not true. So if you've got a story um, and, and it's a, you know, it's a bit of a heartbreaker or whatever, make it real, make it relatable. It's okay to stretch the truth a little to, you know, embellish a point or to emphasize a point. Um, and, run it by some trusted friends and colleagues. And that's one of the other beauties of having an academy is you can go and get a, get a couple of your speaker buddies and go, I got a story, I wanna try it out on you, what do you think? Now, I have a, a mastermind group. Um, I'm not gonna hold the book up again, but I write about it in the book. I talk about a concept called the key four. And so there's you and four other people. Um, so there's me and four of my buddies, we have a little mastermind group and they're the key to unlocking a whole bunch of business for me because here's the thing, these four people <clears throat> and I, um, we all share the same target market, but we don't compete with each other. Uh, and so um, we can refer business to each other, speaking business, till the cows come home. Is that a, a saying you understand? It, yes. You know, forever and ever. Um, okay. <clears throat> and so uh, get, get your mastermind group, get your um, buddies who are in academy with you and run the story by them and and be prepared to get some feedback and be prepared to look at it from a different angle if you think about they, they talk there's a term called spin the diamond and if you think about a diamond there's lots of facets to a diamond and if you spin it you see a different facet every time and so your story could be like a diamond there could be lots of different facets to that story some of which you may not know or see yourself but one of your buddies might point out for you. So, you know, always, always, always practice and try out a new story with someone else before you unleash it onto an unsuspecting audience. Excellent, thank you. All right, I do believe that is all of the questions that we had. So if you've got another question, quickly put it in the chat box. Um, uh, as we're, we're seeing, I do thank you so much for your, your time coming in here today to, to share with us. Uh, I think you gave some great advice. Hopefully y'all um, really enjoyed, you know, whether it's working on your story or, okay, here's how I'm going to work through this, or I'm very intrigued about the whole system on how you're getting those folks on LinkedIn. You know, hopefully everybody got some, some great stuff. Uh, so, Carolyn said um, she already sent you an, an invitation on LinkedIn. So, um, for those, if you wish, you, you can email me. I'm, I'd be delighted to hear from any anyone. Um, and, you know, I have... Here's what happened to me when I joined my local chapter. There was a couple of people in my chapter who, who kind of put their arm around me and said, come with me, Lindsay, and they guided me down the pathway. A bit like I did with you, Tiffany, and I said, you should join Academy. And so a lot of people have helped me in my 20-year career, and now it's my turn to help those people. So if I can help you, any of your listeners, I'd be delighted. I'm going to give you my email address. You, you ready with your pen? It's complicated, okay? You've got it? <laughs> Lindsay at lindsayadams.com. I said it was complicated. Yep. Um, you can join with me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, by all means, write me a testimonial. Um, but, you know, if I can help you in some small way, I'd be delighted. And if you want to learn my LinkedIn system, just give me a lot of money and I'll teach you how to do that. Sounds like a plan. Thank you so very much, Lindsay. Uh, we so appreciate you being here. You're actually our first, I think you're the very first one uh, to, to be in this series of interviews that we're gonna be doing. And I, I, yeah, I, couldn't think, I was like, if we're gonna be doing this, uh, I couldn't think of somebody better to start with than the reason that I started with the organization. Yeah, no, you, you were just doing it alphabetical. My name's Adam. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> so thank you so very much, Lindsay. Thanks everybody that was on here and asked some great questions. Uh, Teresa said, thank you. What a great way to start the day. Carolyn says, thanks. So thank you so very much, Lindsay. And hopefully we'll see you uh, at an upcoming NSA conference, maybe even in Maryland, though probably at some point, right? Um, make sure, and do you know with Lindsay, um, how tall are you, Lindsay? Only six foot three and a half. Only six foot three and a half, which is short compared to like my husband who's six, seven. Um, but compared yeah, exactly. to most people, 
it, it's kind of taller, so look for the taller gentleman at their Just conference. Just the tall, handsome guy, and I'll be right beside him, okay? All right. Thank you so very much, Lindsay. Have a great day. It, enjoy. Everyone. Have a great night. <laughs>